Welcome. So what I'd like to do in this video is talk to you about some uh, misconceptions of inverses of functions. And what I'm going to do for that is I'm just going to provide you with a statement that is false and then provide you with a counter example that state is showing you why that statement is going to be false. So um, in the first statement I have here is uh, if an equation is a function, then it must have an inverse. And that kind of goes into our basic understanding of functions that have inverses must be one to one. And if a function is not one to one, then it does not pass the vertical line test. So a very, you know, popular um, e function that we deal with that does not have an inverse is going to be a quadratic. So um, if a function is, if a function if an equation is a function, then it must have an inverse. So you can see that the quadratic is a function. It passes the vertical line test, but it does not pass the horizontal line test. So it's not one to one. And the reason why that is an issue is because when you find the inverse, like say the inverse of the quadratic or the six, you can see that it is not a function, right? The inverse of this function, so let's call this f of x, the inverse here is now not a function. So therefore um, it doesn't have an inverse. The next one is including domain restrictions uh, to determine the inverse only applies to quadratic functions. So what we did here, though, is if you you know looked at some of my videos that we deal with quadratics, we do actually find the inverse of a quadratic, but we restrict the domain. So what we'll do is we'll have a quadratic here, and what we'll do is we'll say, well, I want to find the domain, but um, you know, let's just say f of x is x squared, but uh, I'm only going to find the inverse of x squared for x values that are greater than zero or greater than or equal to zero. So then what we'll do is we will restrict the domain for only positive values. So is that the only function then that we need to deal with on that? And I'm basically referring to the 12 basic functions that I've been talking with my class. And you can see that the quadratic is not the only function that we deal with that is not one-to-one, -one, that does not pass the horizontal line test. Uh, we also work with the absolute value function, does not pass the horizontal line test, as well as the, as well as the sine graph, right? That's horrible sine graph. So we have sine doesn't work, cosine doesn't work, and tangent doesn't work. And this is very helpful, especially once we get into our trigonometry unit and we start talking about the domain restrictions, we can see why that applies with sine, cosine, and tangent. The next one is the composition of a function and its inverse will always result in one. And if you're used to proving inverses functions, you can easily see that this is not going to be the case. Um, and what actually happens is when you take a function and you apply the inverse, and I didn't really have time to talk about this in my class, so that's why I kind of use this, you're always gonna get back to the identity element. And that's the same thing if you take the f inverse of composition of f of x. And basically the way, reason why this works is if you look at a function, let's just, or let's just look at the identity element x, and you have a function f of x equals, let's say, 3x, you know, plus 1. What we got to do is we went from x to applying these function operations, which is multiplying by 3 and then adding 1. And if you look at what the inverse is of this function, what you see the inverse function, and I'm not gonna show the work, I just kind of know this, x minus one divided by three. You can see the inverse is like the reverse operations that are being applied to x, right? So the function is like applying the operations and the inverse function is like undoing the operations. So you think about composition is like applying and then unapply, like and then reversing it or reversing it and then applying. And either way, you're always gonna result back to the identity element. So the identity element for the functions is x, not one. Uh, in this example, in the last one, if function has a vertical shift up and then a in, then the inverse of the function will have a vertical shift down. And this kind of comes into, you know, students looking at this and saying, um, you know, when we look at the, you know, a function, like they think, oh, well, if it's opposites of each other, then if a function, you know, something like, uh, like for instance, choo -choo -choo -choo, uh, y equals, you know, let's just do the x squared. Um, well, actually, let's use, well, I don't want to do anything crazy. Um, I think I had an idea of what I wanted to do, but I don't know if I want to do, well, let's do that, yeah, x cubed, like plus one. Cool. So let's see if hopefully I can do that. So x cubed plus one, if that's being shifted up one, then the inverse is going to be down one. Right? Well, remember the inverse, guys, is reflection about the y equals x line. And so if I go down one, 
that graph is not reflected about the x equals you know y line. Um, if we look at the inverse function of y inverse, that is going to be a completely new function, which is the cube root of going to be x minus one. So what actually is happening is you're actually going to be shifting it to the right, and the graph is going to look something like. Actually, let's erase that because that gets confusing. Yeah, I'll just put it in the blue. That's fine. So then the graph is actually going to look something like this. So it's not the best by any means. But you can see, though, that's not directly, like, it's not, oh, it shifts up, then you go ahead and shift down. No, that's not how it works. Um, but you've got to use the, you know, you're inversing whatever this function. You have the cubing, now you're dealing with the cube root. The shift up actually turns into a shift, you know, right in this example to be able to get the correct inverse. So that's why we want to make sure that we apply the operations um, for the inverse or, you know, reflect about the y equals x line rather than just assuming, oh, it's opposite, you know, kind of operations. If it's shipped up, shipped down, don't do that. So anyways, those are some misconceptions that I came up with with inverses of functions. I would love to kind of hear uh, some misconceptions you have um, or just some misconceptions that you think would be great to kind of add to the list. Uh, so feel free to add those to the comment below and I love to see what you guys come up with. Cheers.